Hello, I'm Avery or Hazel or Kylie. You can just pick, uh, pick one. I don't care. Hello, I am Lily. Lily. Yeah, I. This is where you would say I'm welcome from. Uh, from <laughs> I, I, the didn't you, I didn't hear you. I didn't you hear. I didn't hear you say that you were Lily. It it cut out. <laughs> but I did though. <laughs> Whatever. God. Uh, what? Fucking, we'll roll with it. I don't care. Uh, welcome to the From the Closet podcast. Um, today, for our free film day for December, we are covering Juno. Uh, obviously, this podcast will contain spoilers for said movie. If you'd like to avoid them, there will be a link in the ju- in the description to the Just Watch page for this movie, uh, which will cur- which will have links to every place you can rent, purchase, or stream this movie, with price comparisons for renting and purchasing. For us here in the U.S., it is a bit... Ju- Sorry, what? <laughs> there'll, be, there'll be a link to the Just Watch where you can find the description. I didn't say that. You were about to. <laughs> no. Um, anyway, for us here in the U.S., it's available for streaming for free on YouTube. Uh, Just Watch does not always accurately show when a movie is free on YouTube. Uh, for those of you who are aware... Uh, From the Closet is technically still currently on hiatus. However, uh, going forward, we are going to continue releasing our free film day episodes, as well as one other episode every month. Um, So we're not doing regular recordings currently, and we don't yet know when we will be able to start back up with that. I just want to get that out of the way. All right, so... uh, Normally, I'd mention Patreon, but we're not doing that right now. So, uh, also in the description, you will find a link to Anchor.fm, which is now Spotify for podcasters, which itself will have links to every platform this podcast is on, as well as links to our Instagram and Twitter, where you can be notified when we release new episodes. But with all that being said, please get out if you'd like to avoid spoilers, because we're going to start discussing the movie now. And I first this, I first watched this movie uh, when my family went on vacation to New York, and there was a brief period of time where we were staying with some other people in Pennsylvania, and um, we watched this movie, we watched Mean Girls, and we watched The Yes Man, and I haven't seen the Yes. I've seen. Sorry, what? I was going to say, I've seen all of those movies except The Yes Man. Yeah. Um, so, for a while, I had both Mean Girls and this movie confused with each other. Like, there were scenes that I was remembering that, like, I thought were from Juno, but were actually from Mean Girls. Specifically, the scene with the teacher going, you will get pregnant and die. <laughs> <laughs> So, like, I don't know. That was that was kind of a shock to me when that was in Mean Girls, uh, when I saw that movie again years later, because I had associated it with Juno. But, whatever. I mean, she didn't die, so... Yeah. Um, but, uh, so yeah, 11 years ago was when I saw this movie, um, and I'm only just now seeing it again for the second time. And I... While I do like this movie, there are a small amount of things that hold it back from even getting into the eights for me. This is going to be in the sevens, probably high sevens. Um, So, one, I, I do find most of the comedy in this movie funny. However, there are the gay jokes, and they really get on my nerves because they're not funny. You know, a lot of people say, like, oh, um, sorry, where's, where was I going with that point? No, um, oh, the gays, you know, they get so offended. No, you use the same five jokes. They're not, they were never funny, but now they're especially not funny. Yeah, it's like, no one, no one's laugh. get new material if you're still gonna be big, bigoted, Jesus. Yeah, you know, I don't really feel like this movie is bigoted per se, 
And I'm not offended by the gay jokes. I just don't find them funny. <laughs> nah, th- that was just a message to um, bigots, I guess. Yeah. If you're gonna keep your ways, at least get better jokes. Yeah, for real. Because I don't know how many more times I can hear the fucking I sexually identify as an attack helicopter joke. At least, can at least identify as a car. You love them so much. Yeah, but, um, okay. So the gay jokes I don't find funny, and it, it just, meh. Okay, so the other thing I find that holds me holds back the score for this movie is the entire dynamic between Juno and Mark. Thank you. Someone said it. That shit was gross as fuck. And from looking at the YouTube comments, I'm not the only one who felt that way. (laughs) Really? Because I looked at the YouTube comments and I saw... Like, I love this movie! This movie's the best! Oh, this movie's so wholesome. I love this movie. Dude, like, literally the top comment underneath the movie is about the fucking dynamic between Juno and Mark. Like, the top comment. (laughs) I mean, I'm pretty sure YouTube filters out comments based on, you know, the user. No, it shows- What else are they doing out- What else are they doing uh, with all that data? They they organize comments based on likes if like depending on if you uh, have depending on what setting you have turned on like you might have it set to newest first in which case it mm-hmm. it's just going to be newest first um, but if you but have if it, set it was organized to- by likes then you should be seeing likes go from descending order but that's not the case you can see a comment that's like. 500 likes. Well, okay, so it might um, before it, like it might not necessarily yes. be likes. It might just be engagement. But yeah. But I mean, I was skimming a little bit, but I was like I was just seeing a bunch because I was actually looking at the comments because um spoiler, I was not into this movie. At least at the beginning. <laughs> the beginning just like 180 me completely like Oh, not that interested. Yeah, I had a feeling that at at least at the start of this movie that you wouldn't be into it. Um, just knowing your tastes and everything. Um, but yeah, like I did think you would probably enjoy it as it went along. Um, or I don't know least, about that. At, or at least have stuff to talk about and not be yeah. and not be necessarily like bored. Um I didn't like how they reused the the sex scene footage so much. Like, I feel like they reused that like three times throughout the movie. I um also kind of have a problem with like the fact that there is so much music here. It was something I was noticing. I don't know. I mean, I think around. Okay, I guess what I should be saying is around this time, a lot of um, directors and screenwriters, I bet they figured that the teens are into music, and that's why a lot of films around this era that are featuring teens are focused a lot about, you know, the the teens' interests are music. You know, you have um, Love, Simon, other movies... But you know what I mean, yeah. right? Well, uh, and, and just another thing, I do love that we have it. We have a movie that tackles like teen pregnancy, because um, like I don't really see that in movies all that often. I see it in books all the time, but never in movies. Hmm. Speaking of which, I wanted to ask. Sorry, what? I want to ask something because it. Was this was this a book to movie adaptation? Not to my knowledge. Because the pacing almost seemed like it. Yeah, to my knowledge, it's not a book to movie adaptation. But hey, just to shift gears completely, mm. I want to talk about the cast of this movie real quick. So sure. we have our main character Juno, 
and I'm going to get back to that name later because I called something and I was kind of shocked. Okay, so we have the main character, Juno, who is played by Elliot Page before he came out as trans. And huh. the opening credits of the this movie still have his dead name, but the description on YouTube actually has his updated name. I mean, it makes sense. Obviously, um, you know, in film, I doubt they would just update the name in the actual film, but, yeah. like, in the YouTube description, there would be, like, links to IMDB pages and other shit. There was no link. It was just, like, plain text, his name. Mm. I mean, a lot of people would use that name to go to IMDB. And look but, up, oh, yeah, I remember that actor. Hey, what else is he uh, doing? Yeah, but, um, so anyway, we have that. We have the character Juno's boyfriend, who is, I can't remember his name, but he's played by Michael Sarah, the dude who would later play Scott Pilgrim. I so fucking I, knew it. <laughs> I yeah. knew he looked familiar. I knew he looked like Scott Pilgrim. Damn, yeah. I'm, I'm and then, great feels great to be validated. And then we have Juno's father, who is played by J.K. Simmons. A.K.A. the guy really? who wants pictures of Spider-Man! I also got that one right. Though I'm, like, I was like, mm -hmm. iffy on that one. But I was like, oh. he, he, he remind he, he looks like he wants pictures of Spider-Man yeah, on his I, desk. See, I was watching the opening credits portion and I saw J.K. Simmons, and I was like, what? He's in this movie? <laughs> he, he doesn't want uh, pictures of pregnancy. No, he, he's only about uh, pictures of Spider-Man. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I, love, um, <laughs> I love how the cast went kind of crazy. There's one random, like, one-off character uh, who I think might be played by Zendaya. Um, but she's not in the movie very long, um, and I didn't look up if it was her. But You're gonna it, have to help me with this one. Uh, who? Zendaya, she played, um, she played Ann Wheeler in The Greatest Showman, she plays MJ in the MCU, uh, I'm trying to think what else she's done, because she's done a lot of stuff. Side question, have I actually even met MJ in the MCU? Yes, because we've covered Spider-Man Homecoming. Okay, sorry, I'm trying to remember, like, if... Uh, no, MJ wasn't um, the focus of that movie. No. They were, like, uh, like a little scene. Yeah, MJ was, like, a character in the background through most of the movie. However, like, she... Like, the end of that movie is, like, my friends call me MJ. Um, because throughout the whole movie, they had been calling her Michelle. Okay, that's right. Sorry, I was just um, blanking out. Because I feel like I saw MJ, but not for that long. Yeah. Um, of course, that's a whole mess. MCU. We'll get back to the MCU eventually. Uh, we may have some trouble, though. I'm not sure. We, it, it's something we'll have to discuss after we record. Hmm. Alright, so, some things that I do like about this movie, number one, I would say the comedy most of the time. Mm -hmm. um, like, this movie is very funny whenever it tries to be a majority of the time, and, like, I don't know. It, it, it got me to laugh more times than I thought it would, because I didn't remember this movie being a comedy. I remembered it more of, like, the... You know, the whole teen pregnancy thing. The actual story. Yeah. Um, during the movie, I was thinking about the comedy of it. I was like, I probably won't want to watch this movie again. But I would be happy looking at, like, clips of the movie. Because <laughs> it is funny at times. I just don't want it. There were so many times I just, like, stopped watching the movie. Because I was like, Jesus Christ, what now? Yeah, I also really do like how supportive um, Juno's parents are and how supportive her boyfriend is, even though she's pushing him away. 
uh, throughout most of the movie. Um, it was just nice to see, like, yeah, like, mm-hmm. when she tells her parents that she's pregnant, like, yeah, they're mad, but they are also, like, immediately in the moment, they're supportive. You can tell they're mad, but they don't they don't go too far with their anger. I mean, I, I feel like um, it makes sense why they're a little mad, you know? I feel like anyone in that situation would be like, well, confused for the most part, and definitely like a little bit of what the fuck. Yeah, <laughs> like how it it can be a very delicate thing, like reacting as a parent in that situation. And um, you know, I, I've seen it go badly for some people because when I was in high school, there were a handful of a uh, a handful of my classmates. Well, not necessarily classmates. I had a small class, but there was at least one mm-hmm. who was actually my classmate. A uh, <laughs> handful of people at my high school got pregnant. Damn. And uh, it wasn't wasn't the greatest for them. But Especially, yeah. like, around your school and around um, the, the culture in that area. I can definitely see that not going very well. And I'm not sure if it's still the case, but um, at least not that long ago, Alabama had uh, the highest rate of teen pregnancy in the country. Um, I don't think, because I didn't see, I don't, oh, I could ask uh, my friend, uh, you know who I'm talking about, Avery, um, but he also went to the same high school as me. I was wondering if he, I could ask him later if he heard anything. But to my knowledge now, I don't, maybe one case I've heard. But even then, oh yeah, that person, like, they moved um, before, like, I started hearing rumors about them. So, yeah, I and was uh... also a bitch. Um, but I think what it comes down to is that, like, our school has a more sexual education. Like, it's not, like, in Mean Girls, where it's like, don't get pregnant or you'll die. (laughs) And it's definitely break down a lot of, you know, STDs, um, ways to prevent getting pregnant and STDs and all of that. Yeah, and see... Because they acknowledge that... acknowledges that they... Like, you can't force teens to not do something. They'll just want to do it more. So it's better to make them safe. Yeah. Whereas like at my school and keep in mind, I live in Alabama for those of you, or I did, um, not going to go into all of that. Um, but in Alabama, my sex ed basically amounted to don't have sex. And also AIDS exists. (laughs) That, that was about it. Don't have sex, but especially don't have gay sex. Okay, uh, we're done for this lecture. Bye. Well, see, they didn't even they didn't even tell us that like it was more common to get AIDS if you were having gay sex. They were just saying like AIDS is bad, so don't have sex. AIDS is bad, so don't have sex. <laughs> oh, that's yikes. Yeah, it was. <sighs> you you want to know why the team you get? This is this is how you get more teen pregnancies. Yeah. Like you need to teach people. Teach people how to be safe. Especially like I remember um when I was learning, like condoms they're not that expensive. Or sometimes they're just free. Yeah, sometimes they are just free. Um So like there's not there's just not a point to not use them. But, um, back on the movie, uh, you know, another thing, um, there's the scene Mm. where Juno's going to the women's clinic and, uh, there's, there's this character who goes to her school and she's like out there protesting abortion and shit. And she's obviously Mm -hmm. a Christian. And I'm just like, oh boy, we've got another Christian who pretends the Bible just says whatever they want it to. Because I got news for y'all, as a Christian myself, the Bible is pro-abortion. 
It even contains instructions on how to get one and says that they are mandatory in a specific circumstance. Amazing. You know, um, Christian community um, that's acting like that, obviously, not, you know, the good. Actually, I don't like saying the good ones because that's just really wrong. But like, I guess, OK, radical Christians. Is that is that a good term? I would say conservative Christians. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Uh, conservative Christians who think um, that Jesus was born in America. Um, you're wrong. Actually, oh, oh, it's a line from Cat in the Hat. You're not just wrong, you're stupid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that that's a pretty good way of putting it. But yeah, um, and for any of you who are listening to this, and let's be real, no one is. Um, <laughs> for any of you who are listening to this and wondering what the hell I'm talking about with the Bible, like, providing instructions on how to get, get a abortion and saying that it's mandatory in a specific circumstance. If you want to know where it is that I'm talking about, it's in Numbers chapter 5. I don't remember what verse is, but it's it's in there. Great. This podcast is now educational. Yes. Does that mean like I can we can mark the video on YouTube as educational? Maybe. <laughs> yeah. Uh woo. But anyway, uh I don't know. Like, I felt like that scene was something that I wanted to bring up, uh, but... Actually, okay. I wanted to bring up that scene a little bit more closely, because I was thinking about it after, um, like, after I've already watched it, and it does paint an interesting picture, because, because I was wondering, like, a lot, like, a lot of the themes of this, uh, would say... Hey, if you looked at this movie from face value, you, you would probably think that this movie is against abortion, you know? But by adding that sort of character and making them so unlikable, it makes me wonder. Yeah. I it's think like, and it, like, if it was an actual, um, you know, Christian movie about abortion is horrible. That character would be like the savior. You know, they would be getting all the claps at Starbucks. You know, they would come back at the end and like, I told you so. <laughs> but that's not what happened. Yeah. And also, just, you made me think of another thing. Um, so in this women's clinic, she goes up to, like, the receptionist lady, and the receptionist lady is playing... On her Nintendo DS. There's no cartridge um, in that DS. <laughs> Picto chat. <laughs> She's playing Picto chat. Yeah, probably. That, that, that's my head can and my head can. She's playing Picto chat. It 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 annoyed me so much because like at, at first, like when she first popped up, I had to go back and rewind because I I wasn't sure. But then, like, I zoomed in, and yeah, there was no cartridge. So, great job, filmmakers. I mean, I'd love to say something like, um, you know, while she should have been doing her job better, very based for having that Nintendo DS. I would agree <laughs> if there was actually a game inside it. No, I mean, what if Okay, what if there's other workers in the building that also have their Nintendo DSs, and that's and that's that's who she's chatting with? I doubt it. <laughs> especially funny, since the, especially since those things did not have a very good range. Oh come on! Wasn't like five hundred? Like there's an entire news article that was not news article. No, that's paper. Uh, like a news segment that was like. Are your kids in danger because of picto chat? Obviously bullshit, but you know. I can tell you like, that they don't have they for sure do not have a range of five hundred feet. Because I can recall trying to picto chat with people in my family while we were in the same house and we were only two rooms apart at like oh, at one fucker. point. You got that big house. No. It, 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 it was not a big house. Like, at one point, I went into a room where we would have been two rooms apart, and it disconnected. And 
every time that I've uh, no, just just no. The DS did not have 500 feet of range on the local communication. Avery, yeah, walls. I think PS. I think like when they were testing it, they were doing it in a open environment, no walls, which you would get a much better connection than if you were two rooms apart, which you would have at max, at minimum four walls to go through. Okay, well, at at that rate, you're still, like, acknowledging the I mean, point that I was making in the first place about the fact yeah. that there was no way that that lady was picto-chatting with some random other person in the building. It could have just been one uh, wall apart. But it does bring up a good point of... Um, even if the statistic was right, that it can do 500, it's very misleading. So always uh, back up your sources. Yeah. Now, see, I, I do want to bring up, because we mentioned it earlier, hmm. there's actually a scene in the Scott Pilgrim movie where a character is playing on a DS. And that DS actually has a cartridge in it. They it's learned. A, the, the, yeah. the, film, like, the filmmakers learned. It's actually, it's a Game Boy Advance cartridge, but it's still a cartridge. Wait, hold on a second. Do we see... Are you sure that uh, the other girl didn't have a Game Boy Advance cartridge in? I'm pretty sure she didn't. I, I tried looking, and best I can tell, there ain't no cartridge there. Like, okay. you, can't, you can't clearly see the bottom of the, the DS, but... There's enough there that I don't think there's a cartridge sticking out of it. I just thought about this. I was just thinking about, like, the DS saw it, and I completely forgot about... Um... Also, I can't remember... That was a DS Lite, wasn't it? I, I believe it was a Lite, yes. If not, it was an original DS. I, I feel like I would have recognized it if it was original DS, but it seemed like it was either a Lite or an I, but more... A light would be more, um... Well, if it was a DSi, it would have had a very noticeable camera on the front. Oh, yeah, you're right. I didn't even think about the camera. Yeah, because the DSi camera is way more noticeable than the 3DS camera. And this movie came out long before the 3DS was even a thing. So, it certainly wasn't a 3DS. I, I, I would have known if it was a 3DS. They have, despite being the same clamshell, they do have a quite dis... You can tell them apart. Yeah. Um, but anyway, yeah, I don't know. That's That was something I wanted to bring up. Um, so, the, the, the name Juno, before hmm. we had even gotten to the point where, like, Juno actually reveals where her name came from, I was sitting here like, I wonder if it's intentional that she's named after the Roman goddess of marriage and family. And then later, they're like, Yes, it is intentional. <laughs> and there's even the whole joke of, like, like the capital of Alaska? No. I love that. <laughs> uh, no, not the capital of Alaska. Um, More like the goddess. Greek Alaska equivalent, doesn't exist. The Greek, equivalent, uh, the Greek equivalent to that goddess is Hera. Um, and there actually is a line in here about how... She's Zeus's first wife, and that's actually incorrect. Zeus had two wives before Hera. Wait, hold up. Jun Wait, why did they say Juno but then switch to Greek? No, he she Juno says uh something about how her dad was really into Greek and Roman mythology. But then, like, Juno says Zeus. I, I get the sense that Juno just doesn't know the difference or doesn't care to know. Or probably says yeah. Zeus because that's what more people will recognize and they won't necessarily recognize Jupiter. You know, actually, I think you're right. There's some iconic uh, Roman names, like Neptune, but Jupiter, uh, nah. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, not 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 that one. <laughs> yeah, so, like, I don't know. To me, like, it, it makes sense that she says Zeus, even though Zeus is the Greek name. 
um, and really it would be Jupiter, but also there's just the fact that it's flat out incorrect that Hera was Zeus's first wife because she was not. Damn, you know, you know, they have like a very old Google, but she's still out of Google. You know, she could have looked that up. <laughs> Lazy. Yeah, but who cares? I do, apparently. Wow, okay. So you want to. Apparently, wanna, I guess. Do you have anything else you want to cover with this movie? Um, I, I mean, I know we. We briefly touched on it, but, like, I do just want to say, like, how weird, like, certain relationships are in this movie. Okay, one, in actually two. I want to say two. Um, Matt. That's, like, the husband, right? Mark. Mark. I was off the mark. Yeah. That was... Okay, yeah, keep in mind, y'all who are listening to this, Lily makes fun of my jokes. Okay. I mean, I'll be honest, I thought about that before. Uh, I thought, oh, wait, his name, that's a pun. Yeah. Anyway. But, but anyways, uh, yeah, the relationship between Juno and Mark is massive yikes. Um, especially, okay, so we have this scene where they're dancing, and he goes, there's something between us. And it's like, y you could interpret that as him making a joke at uh, about her, you know, baby bump. But then, mm -hmm. shortly after that, he says, I'm leaving Vanessa. And he's expecting her to take that news well. <laughs> and it's just... Yeah. I, I wouldn't. The, I mean, yeah. okay. I'll... Like, partway through the movie, you have, like, that ants like, oh, you shouldn't be getting uh, meddling with married men. Uh, and, like, at first I was like, okay, married people can have friends, okay? It's not like once you get married, oh, uh, no friends for you unless you'll start lusting for them. But then l further throughout the movie, it's like, oh, that's the plot they're going yeah, just now, because it's uh, not realistic doesn't mean they can't go for it. Well, I mean, unfortunately, I do think it 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 happens. I'm not going to say it's good, but it happens. Um, I mean, it happens, but I don't think it's like it definitely should not be expected as the norm, or at least I wish it would not be the norm that people can't like marry people can't have friends or else they'll start lusting over them. Yeah, well, I don't think that was exactly what was going on. I think it was more like the stepmother was concerned about Juno and everything. And I understand where Juno's coming from in that scene. However, he, the dude was like already trying to flirt with her even before that. Yeah, though, no, obviously, she probably wasn't picking up on that until the dancing. Yeah. But like... It's just a yike. That character is a yikes, and especially like I'm he's about to get become a father of adopted child, but still, and he's like, Yeah, I'm leaving her. <laughs> like, what a douche. And he thinks he's gonna get with the person who's actually the mother of the child he was planning to adopt, and uh Oh it it, it was yikes. Or or we're forgetting the age. 16. Yeah. Like, what the fuck? How did you think this was gonna go? It was gross. It's clearly and clearly not how it, it t actually happened. Yeah. Because I feel like, and especially because this, that, uh, those moments were periodic enough through the movie where I was like, okay, you know, I, I think I'm getting, you know, the movie is, like, warming up to me. And nope. You throw in something weird. Yeah. It, it, I wish this relationship dynamic wasn't in the movie. Um, just at all. I would rather, I'd rather him be a horrible husband than what, I mean, he already is a horrible husband. I want him to be more of a stereotypical horrible husband than whatever the hell this is. Yeah. 
Like, I feel like that's the one thing that's probably going to keep me from coming back to this movie. Um, even though I do like the majority of the rest of it. So, yeah, it, it, it's unfortunate, but it is the way it is. And with that, Critic I ratings. think that's the last thing I want to say. Yeah. Okay, critic ratings for Juno. IMDb, uh, 7.5. Rotten Tomatoes, 94%. Metacritic, 81. And Rotten Tomatoes... Wait, I'm not done. What the fuck am I doing? Yeah, like uh, Google 80, users? 80 I mean, I don't really care about the Google users. Google users can go die. But uh, 80% of Google users like this movie. Anyway, 88% audience score, too. Okay, on Rotten Tomatoes. All right. Um, yeah. I think I'm going to give this a 7.7. 7. 6.5. Point... Six. Wow. All right. Well, um, I would... This is normally the part where I would tell you what's upcoming, but we don't know. So, uh, I guess join us for the next episode of From the Closet, which will happen sometime later this month. Uh, but until then, I've been Avery, that's been Lily, and we will be seeing you.